It was April 15, 1848, when about 70 slaves made their way down the dark streets of the nation's capital. Mary and Emily Edmondson and their four older brothers were part of the group that boarded a schooner called the Pearl, hoping to sail to freedom. Their father, Paul, was a free man, and their mother, Amelia, was a slave, which meant her children were born slaves. Deeply religious, the Edmondsons prayed for a successful escape, knowing that it was all in God's hands. You don't realize there's a plan set for you. You just go along in life. In fact, you don't think about what's going to happen and what you're going to do. You just go on, and if it's God's will, you go on the right path. The plan, sail down the Potomac River, up the Chesapeake Bay, and on to new life. There was no wind, so they waited and waited and waited, and uh, a good wind came and took them down the river. Um, Unfortunately, that wind became fierce, so they had to drop anchor in Maryland. And they got caught right where the Potomac and Chesapeake Bay meet. Everyone on the ship was taken back to D.C. The slaves were marched two by two, the men in chains, up to the jail. And everyone gathered to watch, not just the white anti-abolitionist people, but the black community and some of the relatives of the people who were being marched. The Edmondsons were eventually sold to a slave trader in Alexandria, Virginia. This building was once the very slave pen that housed both Mary and Emily. It now stands just 30 feet away from a statue honoring the two girls today. Even upon being captured, they walked proudly with their heads up and singing spirituals. That, that's nothing but faith. Um, and those who have strong faith know the peace that comes with it. Steal away. After their capture, the six Edmondson siblings were sent to New Orleans. Because they were attractive and very valuable, Mary and Emily were to be sold as sex slaves. But yellow fever broke out, and they were brought back to Washington. Throughout the entire ordeal, Amelia and Paul worked with members of the Underground Railroad to come up with the money to free their children. The Underground Railroad was really a, um, uh, not a physical railroad, but it was a, um, a movement of individuals, starting first with the slaves themselves, who yearned and desired to be free. They also reached out to the Christian community for help. Members of the family are credited with starting two churches in Washington, one is John Wesley AME, the other is Asbury United Methodist Church, where they attended faithfully. Their pastor joined a group of Methodist ministers to raise donations to buy the girls' freedom. Lenise Robinson, historian of Asbury United Methodist Church, reads part of that letter. The case of these girls is one that claims the sympathies of the benevolent, and I most earnestly pray that the efforts of their friends may be crowned with success in securing their freedom. Matthew A. Turner, pastor of Asbury Chapel. This led renowned minister and abolitionist Henry Ward Beecher to New York's Tabernacle Broadway Church, where he preached a fiery sermon that finished raising the necessary funds. And he said to people, think as if they were your daughters. Think as if they were going to be taken away. These two young Methodist daughters. And then he pointed to their father, Paul Edmondson, who had come up from Maryland and said, here is their father. Think if you were in his place. And it, it was a magnificent evening. Now free, the Edmondson sisters joined the anti-slave circuit with the likes of Frederick Douglass. Harriet Beecher Stowe depicted their journey in her book, A Key to Uncle Tom's Cabin. Stowe sent Mary and Emily to Oberlin, Ohio, an important stop on the Underground Railroad. When blacks came into this community, they felt this was a safe haven. Uh, it was never easy. I mean, they had to struggle, like everyone else, uh, to try to feed themselves. But they didn't have to stand in fear of uh, being turned in. Mary died of tuberculosis in Oberlin at the age of 21. And Emily returned to Washington, where she attended the normal school for colored girls. She married, and her descendants still live in the area today. John Jessup, CBN News.